Hey, I'm Mike Backrell, and today we're going to take a look at a contrapuntal 251 line from Jimmy Weibel, as well as go through a couple variations I came up with. Let's take a look. <laughs> This line comes from a piece that Jimmy composed called Slightly Blue, and you can find it in here. I highly recommend checking out that book because every single measure of every piece in there is is a whole year's worth of lessons of stuff to look at. I've been going through this piece, Slightly Blue, for about a month now, and I've, I've already done a lesson on, on one measure of music, and this is the second measure of music that I found that is worth really exploring. So I highly recommend checking it out and learning these pieces for yourself and really trying to analyze them. These lines So what these are, these are minor two fives that eventually resolve down to C major. So let's go through them. So this first part I'm sustain the the top note is the one I'm sustaining in this first portion of the line, this B flat here. And I'm holding an E down here. This and then I'm going up this uh, E minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio. I'm holding the B flat here, and I'm playing E, G, D, E. So this is an E minor 7 flat 5. And then I go, and here I'm, I'm sustaining the bass note while, while the top notes are moving. It's really important that you sustain the, the notes that are intended to be sustained, and then just kind of move through the notes that aren't when you're playing this Jimmy Weibel stuff. Okay, so the second part, you can look at this two ways. You could either think, okay, here's an E flat seven. Or I'm going E flat and D flat here, which is the flat seven, and then I go up to A, which is the sharp eleven, G, which is the third, and then E E natural, which is the flat nine. Or I can think of that as A seven. And I'm playing the flat five, which is E flat, and the C sharp, which is the third, going up to the root flat seven and the fifth whichever way you think of it the cool thing is they're both the same thing and they function the same way so whichever way you see it is <clears throat> totally fine it doesn't matter so, so this whole line here okay, now, so we've played e minor seven flat five and a seven or e flat seven and we want to resolve to d to d minor so i can just do that now i can land right here There's a complete 2-5 idea. Let's expand on the ending a little bit. I'm going to go back to one of my earlier Jimmy Weibel lessons right now and bring up something that I talked about that's within Jimmy Weibel's first etude, and it's this chord movement. So what's going on is here, I'm playing D and F, and I'm holding the F the whole time. And then I'm walking through to build the chord gradually. So I'm going D, G sharp, A, B, B natural, C, and down to D. And once I get to each chord tone, so A, C, and D, I'm gonna let them hold down a ring while it, so I'm gonna sustain notes while I'm moving other notes around. Hold, hold, and then I should have the whole chord ringing out when I did it properly. Now, if you want more information on that one idea, I did a whole video on that, which which I will link in the comments so you can check out. So that's a minor two five. How can we turn it into a major two five? Well, let's move the, the, the B flat here, the flat fifth, up to the fifth. We're going to have to refinger it, though, to do that. So I'm going to put my pinky here and, hold, and let that hold out, and I'm going to play the arpeggio with these fingers. All I did with the first portion is move the B flat to a B natural. So now I have E minor 7. Same notes down there. Now for A7 or E flat seven, I did the same thing. And for the one chord, all I did was change that, that chord shape to a major seven. So I'm going D, G sharp, A, hold it, 
B, C sharp, hold it, back down to D. So as I started messing around with this idea, I started to come up with some other options of things you could do with this. So here's another variation I came up with. So let's break down what's going on in that. So this first part remains the same. This is the minor seven version of the previous line. So same exact thing. So I'm holding a B and I'm just staying with my pinky. By E, G, D, E. Okay, then here I'm doing this line that Sid Jacobs actually told me that he got from Jimmy Weibel. So what's going on here? With my third and fourth finger, I'm holding B flat and C sharp, or B flat and D flat, which over the A7 would be the flat nine and the third. And then I'm going with my first and second finger, playing G and E, which is the fifth and the flat seven, and then going down here to my to C sharp, my pinky, and E flat with my uh, third finger, which is the third and the flat fifth, and then with my first and second finger, I'm grabbing A and G, which is the root and the flat seven. And that works just the same if you're visualizing the E flat over it, because then it would be, this would be the, the fifth and the flat seven, this would be the flat nine and the third, this would be the root and the flat seven, and this would be the the third and the and the sharp eleven, or the flat five. So it works the same regardless of which if you're viewing it as a tritone sub or as just a A7. It works the same either way. Okay, and then here This is an idea I did another lesson on, and this also comes from the same exact piece, slightly blue. And what I'm doing is I'm just playing a major 7 arpeggio and two different versions at the same time. So in the bottom voice, I'm playing root, third, fifth, seven, to back to the root. In the top voice, I'm playing seven, one, three, five, seven. I did an entire lesson on this concept, and I'll link that in the comments as well so you can go more depth into that particular idea. I can turn this back into a minor situation too. All I did that time was I lowered the B natural back to B flat, fingered it like that, and then I played up the two inversions of the minor seven arpeggio rather than the major seven. So this is a really cool idea of something that you can integrate into your solo playing or you, even into your regular line playing of just adding some contrapuntal ideas. If you listen to some of Jimmy Weibel's recordings when he's playing with a band, he does some of this stuff in his improvisations. It's not just reserved for his solo playing. And I think there's a really powerful ideas that really kind of open up things. And hopefully you can kind of do what I did and see the idea, learn it, and then see which ways you can manipulate it and make it your own. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Keep practicing. See you next time.